You're listening to the Business Club for Grown-Ups podcast with Jessica Fernley. everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Business Club for Grown Ups podcast with me Jessica Fernley. We're drawing to the end of the summer at the moment and maybe it's the project manager in me. I'm, I'm fairly sure I have that in my DNA somewhere. I just love project management and spreadsheets are my happy place. I've said that to lots of people and it really is true. But it really feels like a brilliant time to just take stock and reflect back on what I've been doing this summer, what's worked, what hasn't. In project management, we call this lessons learned. And in my Prince two days, we would always do a lessons learned log at the end of a project or even just going through the project. We'd fill it out and just document all the time what had gone wrong, the learning points we were taking forward, those kinds of things. And it's it's something that I've brought with me into my business and something that I recommend to all my clients because it can just be such a helpful way to take stock of things and make sure that, OK, so you might make a mistake, but you won't make the same mistake twice. So I thought I'd invite you in really. This is almost like a journal entry for me and I wondered if you'd like to hear some of the things that I've been reflecting about my own business and maybe that'll help you as you reflect on your own businesses whether it's coming to the end of the summer and just taking stock of where you are and where you want to be or even if you're listening to this episode further into the future it can be such a helpful thing just to take stock and to really get your head into what's going on in your business, what's gone really well. And for me, I have to say this summer, it's, it's never just about business, is it? So I've had a seven week summer holiday with my kids. We found out at the beginning of June that our nursery would be closing down because they'd lost their building, unfortunately. Um, and that was, I have to say at the time, that was a complete bombshell. I think when I first found out, I had a moment of like, no, this can't be happening because my eldest son is just about to start reception Um, so infant school for the first time and I have a one-year-old son as well who for the last year has been doing a couple of days at nursery and I had a real kind of blueprint for what life would look like this autumn because everything that we do has been within walking distance and school and nursery were both within walking distance of our house so I was feeling really positive about what it would be like dropping one son at school one son at nursery and then coming home to work it was all lining up really nicely and so suddenly to then realised that okay so school wasn't going to be changing but the nursery that we've been banking on just continuing at wasn't going to be on the table at all and it really has changed things you know instead of everything being a five minute walk away it's now a 10-15 minute drive and we're just working out the impact of traffic on that now that schools are starting back and all that kind of thing. My routine has gone very much from being almost exactly what I would choose to being a lot more out of my control and certainly I wasn't necessarily planning to have the kids in nursery for the whole summer but I wasn't planning to have them at home for the entire summer either so suddenly finding out that I'm going to be spending seven weeks looking after them it's all been something I've had to really get my head around at quite short notice and so having gone through the summer in the way that I have here's my learning points really here here are the things that I'm taking away that I'm reflecting on which I wonder if you'll also be able to relate to so first of all I've realized that I just really need childcare. I haven't worked full time in my business since I started. I've always worked part time hours and I've had varying degrees of childcare during that time. So sometimes I've had three days a week. Sometimes I've had one day a week. Whatever I've had, I've always tried to make it flexible. I've always tried to work the business around what I'm doing. But this summer I have really, really noticed the gear change that I've gone through. So literally I've gone from having two working days in the week where the kids are not at home to having zero and doing days where I'll be with the kids all day and then suddenly I'm trying to do a working day in the evening and I've just found it so incredibly tiring. I've been more tired this summer than I think I can remember being since probably the kids were absolutely tiny and just the slowdown that I've experienced in sort of remembering things and planning things and keeping on track with the things that I said I was going to be doing. That has just kind of all gone out of the window and I'm comfortable with that. I'm not bothered by that. I like my business to fit around my life outside work and particularly my family responsibilities. But it has really struck me how much harder I found it to concentrate, how much harder I found it to finish things. Because actually, when you're working late into the evening, you know that you could stay up a few more hours and get it finished, but the cost of that will be you still have to start the day at 6.30 tomorrow morning and the kids are going to be fully charged having had a good night's sleep. 
So the cumulative effect of that, just working late every evening, that has hit me like a ton of bricks this summer. (laughs) But I think that's something that I needed to experience because it's made me a lot more resolute about evening working generally. I do have working days available to me in the week and I won't actually have to work evenings from September onwards. And it's made me realise how much if I'm doing childcare all day and then working all evening, there's just no space for any interests that I might have for just keeping the house under control. There are just so many things that I haven't even noticed I haven't done. And it's like seven degrees of chaos downstairs sometimes. So I really feel like I'm going into the autumn just a lot more resolute about not working evenings in a way that I haven't really been before. I'm usually quite relaxed about that. And sometimes if there's things that I just want to get finished, I'd rather work the evening and know that it's done. But actually, I really want to challenge myself to do things a bit differently in the business going forward and make sure that I'm getting the bulk of my work done during the day when the kids are at school and at nursery. And actually, work doesn't take up my evenings in the same way. So that's my first reflection. I think I just really need childcare in order to be able to do my business in the way that I want to do it. I don't enjoy this feeling of being stretched really thin. I don't enjoy feeling like the household is falling apart around me because I'm just not aware of whether I've done meal planning and food shopping and things like that and everything is hand to mouth and everything is a bit chaotic. I'd like to get back to being a little bit more organised around the house. I think the second thing is I've noticed how much I really love my business and how much I love having time to work on my business. I've really missed that time actually when everyone else is out at work or school or nursery and it is just me at home getting stuff done on my business without feeling like I'm burning the midnight oil or I'm really having to dig deep to find the energy and the focus in order to actually get those things done. And I think it's made me feel quite thankful that I do have my business, I enjoy it so much. In a way, there's just something quite rewarding about missing that because it hasn't been an option for seven weeks in the way that it normally would be. I think the third thing is I I really do love spending time with the kids. I think it took me about four weeks to get over like this real sense of like, oh, you know, why is it always me? Why is it always my work that gets disrupted because of childcare? And, you know, part of that is just having a chip on my shoulder and being grumpy But it is hard, isn't it? When we're mums, when we have children that we really love and we want to look after, finding a way to also do our business can just really be stretching at times. And I think, yeah, probably for about four weeks, I did feel quite discontent and I felt quite frustrated and I felt quite restless about the fact that I knew I had so much that I wanted to be getting on with, but I really couldn't do it with the kids around in the same way. But then I don't know what it was. Something clicked in after the four weeks and I just suddenly thought, do you know what? I'm actually really enjoying having the time with them because everything happens at a different pace when it's all day every day. And this summer, we've had some really awesome adventures together. We've had some really nice days out. We've had some days where behaviour of certain family members has been challenging and times when it's just really driven me around the bend and I've just felt like, gosh, I just don't have any space to breathe at all. But I think there's something about parenting, isn't there? It has to be intense in order to work. The more time you spend together, actually, you kind of get that quality of relationship. And I've really started to enjoy the kids in a way that I probably haven't for a while. I think I've pushed through that phase where I've just been so incredibly tired because I've been so exhausted at points this summer. I think sometimes just watching my younger son eat, you know, how babies do everything just with their little pincer grip. And he's so precise about what he wants to do. And he's so determined. He'll look at like a pea and he'll pick it up and he'll eat it with such determination. I just love that about him. And it's been brilliant just having the opportunity to really observe them. Sometimes, you know, when they don't even know that you're watching them, but you're just, your heart is kind of bursting with pride just because they're doing normal stuff that all kids do. But it's just lovely to have those moments where you really do appreciate them and you're really thankful that you have them. I've taken quite a lot of videos of the kids just doing really funny things this summer. And one thing that they've started doing is just when they're in the car, they really they play with each other quite a lot. So one of them will be tickling the other one and there'll be lots of laughing and just lots of monkeying around as we're driving places. But actually, I just I'm so thankful that they enjoy each other's company and they get on really well. They're not at the point yet where they argue over everything and there's, you know, squabbling over everything. And I'm sure that day will come. But I've just been really thankful for those moments where, you know, they've got on really well and they've just been playing with each other and really enjoying it. I think that's been absolutely lovely to see. But also stuff just happens during the course of the day, doesn't it, sometimes? And literally two days ago, one of my cats brought in a live dragonfly from the garden, which was just an enormous dragonfly. And I was glad that it wasn't dead, actually, because it's awful when cats just 
kill everything in the garden but um we were all eating lunch and suddenly the cat came in and I I just happened to look up and she had this dragonfly in her mouth and I was like do not drop that do not drop that so of course she went right into the living room on my lovely beige carpet and just put it down on the floor and then it started to sort of flap about a bit and I was like oh my gosh it's not even dead so I then ran to get a bowl to try and catch it in because I thought if it starts flying around the house what are we going to do I by the way I really hate insects of all kinds I just really hate them so I was freaking out quite a lot and then I managed to just quickly put like a mixing bowl over this dragonfly which it just was so big and then it's trying to fly out of the mixing bowl but it can't quite get it so it just keeps banging against the side of it and oh my goodness I was so glad that my husband was coming back he is totally in charge of dealing with insects and all things of that kind because I just really can't cope with it but my son just thought it was the funniest thing firstly that I was freaking out as much as I was Um, but also he was like there's this enormous dragonfly trapped in a bowl in the living room and it's become like you know a real thing that I will certainly remember for a very long time he's told most people that we've seen this week that it happens and you just think actually these are the things that you really gain when you're around and you have that time with them I don't know I'm not feeling super emotional about him starting school I think that he's really ready for that extra step of independence so I don't know maybe it'll all hit me on Monday when we take him but I I feel really excited about him starting school but it's nice to be able to treasure these moments because everyone says oh you know once they start school it's never the same and and I just think oh don't be so negative it's going to be fine it's going to be really good but yeah I'm just really thankful that we have had time this summer to make memories and that I've had that opportunity to really enjoy time with the kids almost without work being there to get in the way. I think the fourth thing is really that just sometimes you can't plan for stuff. You know, like I said, I didn't expect that nursery wouldn't be an option this summer. But you have to roll with the punches, don't you, and do the best that you can. I had a big debate in my mind about whether I should get my eldest son enrolled in a summer camp, like maybe a sports camp or something like that, because he's only four. And my my sort of gut instinct was that he might find the separation a bit much and if he didn't know anyone there, it just, it might be a bit too much for him. He's quite a sensitive boy. And I wanted to make sure that he had a good summer and that he felt really confident going into September rather than just feeling like everything over the summer had been a bit too stressful. But then actually what I started to notice was that I think the lack of routine, because we did lots of fun things, but we didn't do the same thing every day. And it's so important, isn't it, to know your kids and know how they're doing and what they'll respond well to. But you, you can't always know in advance whether something is going to be the right thing. So I started to notice that he was acting up quite a lot. He was pushing the boundaries just constantly. And I think it was just because he was having a hard time getting his head around the fact that there was no routine. And I went out for one afternoon and my mum was looking after him. And he was really upset, apparently, the whole time that I was gone which is not nice to hear as a parent, isn't it? You don't want to feel like they're really unsettled without you. But then I have to say, the benefit of me having gone out just for a few hours one afternoon was that when I came back, his behaviour was so much better. And I actually just thought, you know, I probably should have gone for the summer camp because I think he would have handled it a lot better than I gave him credit for. But it's just so hard to know these things. And I think similarly with my business, I didn't really have much of a game plan for the summer I just assumed I'd be able to get everything done that I normally do I wasn't really sure how it would happen but I just thought well if I work a few evenings and there were some bumps in the road some things that were planned in fell through and it meant that there was some running around to do to just make sure that deadlines were met in the way that they needed to be and I guess yeah my question to myself was like could I have done anything differently to handle that better but sometimes you just can't know what life is going to throw at you or what your business is going to throw at you things can be agreed verbally and then they just don't go ahead the way you think they will so we always need to be a bit adaptable and we can't always get it 100% right I guess it's more just thinking would I do anything differently and sometimes we just have to do something and then it might end up being the right thing or it might not So I feel a bit like this summer was like my plan B because plan A just fell through without me really having any control over that. And that happens sometimes, doesn't it? So all things considered, I think it all worked out pretty well. Fifthly, the thing that I've really noticed is that I'm just not using my team enough. I'm not using them for a ton of stuff that for some reason I've held on to. And I think it's having a lot less time available for work this summer. It's really made me notice how much stuff I do myself in my business that I should probably outsource. And definitely, I think if I was going to be without childcare again, I would outsource a load more stuff than I have done. Because actually, it doesn't make sense. If you don't have the time to follow up something, you should get someone else to do it. And I think I feel in my own business, it's not really worth being stressed all the time and just trying to do more than it's physically, humanly possible for a person to do. 
And so I'm taking that with me into the autumn and I'm going to be reviewing very carefully what I do myself versus what I outsource to other people. And I think that feels like a really positive way to approach it actually because it's when you get those moments of just thinking this is just not manageable and you think well if it's not manageable then what are you going to do about it? I think that's been a really helpful prod for me so I'll definitely be reviewing my processes and how I use my team I think this autumn. I think lastly I've been really struck just by how adaptable it's possible for us to be as entrepreneurs. So even though I started the summer seven weeks ago just thinking it's going to be a nightmare. How are we going to do it? I don't know. We just have to do our best. But quite quickly, I found that I was finding pockets of time in the day. I was finding a pattern of doing things during the day where there would be some time freed up for me to just focus on a few things that needed to be taken care of. So quite often we do our activity in the morning and then we come home for lunch and then after lunch the baby has a nap and the rest of us have some downtime. But actually that downtime is very, very useful. If I can get my four-year-old engaged in something, then actually that can be really golden time for me to work on quite a few things. I've felt for a long time like it's just not possible for me to work with the kids around and on so many things. Like I could not record a podcast episode with them around because they just, they love the microphone so much. We um, had a hilarious time testing out my Blue Yeti when I bought it and trying to work out where the actual sound recorder was in it but yeah both of them just loved it so much they wanted to touch it even with hands that had yogurt on which was very stressful for me but you know they're just so excited by it whatever they were doing they would just drop it completely and come over and get involved so I know I definitely couldn't record podcasts or record video content or anything like that with them around but at the same time there's lots of things that I can do in my business that have more flexibility than I realise. So if we're watching a film or something like that together, then actually they don't mind if I just have my computer and I'm just sitting there doing a bit of editing or quietly getting on with a few jobs in the background. I think it's always important to just take stock of the new opportunities that come your way, whatever season of your business you're in. And I've really enjoyed actually having a slightly different type of accountability this summer, which has revolved more around Google Docs and doing a spreadsheet that we update rather than having like a face-to-face meeting or anything like that. That's been really helpful actually and just being a bit more adaptable, taking into account the fact that we can't necessarily do everything 100% the way we would do it normally. I think that's something to always be encouraged by. If you're an entrepreneur then you will find a solution, whatever the problem, whatever situation you end up in where you just think I really don't know how I'm going to do this. And as a business coach, this is something that I see so often. People say there's no solution to this problem, it can't be fixed. And yet, I almost always know that they already know what the solution is, but they they are too scared to do it or they feel too close to doing it. And so as a coach in that situation, your, your job is to get people to the point where they can see the opportunity and they can see the resources they have to deal with that opportunity and make the most of it. And I think it's it's been one of those moments where you just kind of think actually yeah that's totally the situation that I've been in I I didn't feel like this summer was an opportunity I felt like it was a major threat to my productivity and probably my well-being but actually there's been a lot of good that's come out of it I think having a change of pace has really helped me even though I've spent a lot of this summer feeling incredibly tired that's also been a bit of a warning to me and just show me that actually My instinct is not always to look after myself first and deal with the business second. But actually, we can't always just drop everything and go full pelt on the business. And it's not always a case of work really hard and the business goes well and then work less hard and the business goes badly. I talked a bit about that in last week's podcast episode of just my experience of really slowing down my business in 2017 and finding that the business just did so much better than it had done the previous year. There's something quite powerful about just changing pace dramatically because when we slow down, we really notice things that we don't notice when we're just rushing and rushing all the time. So those are my reflections, I guess, from this summer and some of the things that I'm taking with me into the autumn. I don't know if that's relatable to you, whether you've spent the summer at home with kids or you haven't really had to change what you do in a dramatic way. For some of us, the summer can just be quite a sort of dead period of everyone else disappears and so we lose a bit of that momentum just because of our audience really more than the constraints that we have personally but I think whether you've had a busier than usual summer or just a very quiet summer it's always important to just take stock of what's been going on and how you want to do things going forward I'm really passionate about that it doesn't matter if you've had a terrible business year up to this point there's everything to play for in the autumn and I'll have more to say about that in a few weeks time watch this space because there's some good things coming So I hope that's inspired you to do a bit of reflection on your own business and how it's going and what you want your goals to be going forward. I just think time spent 
asking those questions is never time wasted. It can be so, so helpful in just really digging into the things that you want to achieve. And if you don't already have a business journal, I really recommend that you think about starting it because if you work on your own in your business, or even if you have a team, but you're very much in charge of that team and you're occupying the CEO position in your business, it's so, so helpful to just stay grounded and make sure that your mindset is where it should be. I find it so helpful for just making sure I'm not being held back by a lot of these almost circular thoughts, you know, the ones that just go round and round and you think them again and again, and they can start to be quite controlling and quite limiting. Whereas I find if I just journal these things out, then it can actually be really, really productive in just moving things on and making sure that I'm not telling myself things about my business that aren't helping me to move forward. I hope you've had a really good summer and I hope you'll join me this autumn for some more podcast episodes that will really help you get your business where you want it to be. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Business Club for Grown Ups podcast with Jessica Fernley. To find out more, visit thebusinessclubforgrownups.com.